I think you all have a listing questionnaire. You guys have listing questionnaires? I know Joe does. No? Didn't you give us some? Yeah. No, I've got it. Okay, well, let me ask a different question. Even though I've given you a listing questionnaire, do you ever use it? Yes. Okay, yes. How many people, yeah, kind of, sometimes, sort of? Always. I think your process has to be always. Okay? I think every time a conversation in any realm, whether it's open houses, whether it's an ad call, a sign call, when you decide, when you find out they have a house they need to sell, you need to go grab this piece of paper. And you need to start working your way through it. Same thing with buyer questionnaire. You have to process your way. Okay? Because if you don't put processes in place, here's what happens. You use time as a lever. Because you don't know what to expect now from these people. And you start throwing more and more time on it. And you become more and more stressed out over this stupid business that we all decided we were going to get in because we were going to be our own bosses. Right? And we got to back up and put the processes in place. I think you got to have a pre-listing packet. How many people have a pre-listing packet? Okay. Sort of. You need to have a pre-listing packet. You, uh, you, you, need to, you need to create something. I don't really care what it is. You just need to have a packet you can drop off for people. Okay? Tells you a little bit about you, the way you work. Maybe lays out some expectations. Maybe lays out some rules. If somebody wants a pre-listing packet template, all you got to do is email me. I'll send you one. And I won't charge you. Okay? You're going to go to the house. <coughs> Number one, on the... On the uh, let's see if I can go back. Whoops. Right down here at the bottom of the listing questionnaire, I'm going to propose to you, you set two appointments on the initial phone call. You set an appointment to go out and take a look at their house. And here's the dialogue. My first appointment will only take 10 or 15 minutes. When's a good time for me to come by and have a tour of your home? And you want to do it as fast as you possibly can. The reason you want to get out there as fast as you possibly can is you want to see how they really live. Because three or three or two or three months into this, they're going to start living like they really right. live. You want to know up front, <clears throat> really, as we get longer, because the longer we're in a listing relationship with somebody, the more stressful it gets, right? For everybody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we want to know, after the excitement wears off, what's this house going to look like? So you want to get out there as fast as you can. What they're going to say to you is, well, I need to clean it up. No, not for me. I'm only going to be there like 10 or 15 minutes. Set the expectation. This is not going to be a full-blown listing. I'm coming in to look at your house. That's really all you're there for. You want to see how, whether they, they, they keep it in a, in a nice manner. You want to see if it smells. Right? Well, I mean, you want to see if it has a pet odor. Do they, are they smokers? Because we need to be able to address those issues in the presentation. And it means that we need to figure out how we're going to address those issues in the presentation without making them mad and without coming off as being rude. And you've got to practice that and you've got to work on it before you go do it with them. A lot of what ends up happening, uh, I, had a, I was talking about this in Kansas City this week, and we, we got into the, the, the process, the listing presentation process, right? And one of the agents said to me, what I hear from people all the time is, I'm not in a hurry. And I said, well, why do they say that to you? And she goes, well, what do you mean? I said, where does that come up? They just blurt out, first thing out of their mouth, I'm not in a hurry. I said, you've done something. Surprise. You, you, well, but you've done something to make them feel the need to tell you, I'm not in a hurry. Now, what is it you did? I want you to really think about that. Right? And she said, well, one of the questions that I ask is, how quickly do you need to be out of here? And I go, well, there you go. You ask the question, how quickly do you need to be out of here? They throw the wall up and say, I'm not in a hurry. And all of a sudden now we have a whole new set of rules for the rest of the presentation. So I said, don't ask people how quickly they need to be out. Does that make sense? So much of what happens in these scenarios, and I'm a, I'm a dialogue geek, 
and a human behavior weirdo. So much of what happens, there's the said of any conversation. There's what's going on right now, somebody talking. Then there's the unsaid in the conversation that never comes up. And the unsaid is where all the cool stuff is. Right? Yeah, that's kind of out there, isn't it? Yeah, it's tricky, but it's the truth. It's, it's the unsaid is, is really the drivers of all this stuff. And, and so many times we create scenarios that we don't realize we created. The client reacts to what we said, and all of a sudden now we run down a new set of rules. So when, when we're in a presentation mode, when we're talking to clients, you have to be very neutral. The very beginning of the conversation is all about them. It's the relationship part. It's the relationship and expectation part of the conversation. What do you expect to have happen in the sale of your house? What do you expect to have happen when you purchase a house? Here's what I think you can expect. History says this is kind of how this works. Then we talk monetary. Right? So it's relationship on the front end. Then it's the monetary piece how much you might be able to get for your house realistically or how much you might have to pay for the house that you're wanting, you know, whether you're a buyer or a seller. Is this step two you're talking about? Is no, I kind of got, I'm off, I'm off on a tangent, I'm telling oh, a story. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honest with you. No, I appreciate that, but I'm, yeah, I'm off, I'm in left field, I'll come back to the box in a second. Okay. The third level is the advertising piece or the marketing piece, right? The theory would be if we don't check off on the front end on expectations in a relationship, price doesn't matter. If I find out in the, in the relation in the expectation piece that you're going to expect me to do a whole bunch of stuff I'm never going to do and I'm going to be uncomfortable, even if you price it right, it, it's not going to be good. I don't like being around you. Right? But if we get the expectations in the relationship right and then we have agreement on price, Then, then we'll talk marketing. But marketing's not going to fix a bad price, is it? Uh -uh. No, no matter how much marketing I do on a, on a house that's 40 grand over price that really needs to be a short sale, I can kill myself spending money on it and it ain't going to sell. So we have to kind of keep that mentality. Okay? So now back to the slides, 